that we promised you at right at the beginning of the show. My colleague Ekta Patra has Gagan Banga of India Boost Financials. Ekta, over to you. Hi, thanks Nayantara for that. Let's go across to Gagan Banga who's released uh, the numbers of India Bulls Housing Finance. Hi Mr. Banga, thanks very much for joining in. Uh, can you just start by taking us through the highlights of this quarter in terms of your NIMS and your credit costs and how exactly uh, your spreads did, did as well? This quarter has actually been very robust for us. So we've been able to record a 25% increase uh, in our uh, overall profits for the year. Uh, profits have increased to a little over 1,266 crores for the year uh, from 1,006 uh, crores. Uh, this is largely on the back of a very stable growth in our loan book. Uh, and uh, since over the last few years, the emphasis has been on home loans. We have uh, been also able to moderate the asset quality to very stable levels. So gross NPLs are restricted to 79 basis points. Mm -hmm. Net NPLs stand at about 33 basis points. So asset quality has been very stable. Uh, we've also come through a stage where uh, the evolution in the asset book uh, finished about a year ago and spreads have been stable at about 350 basis points. Return on asset is stable at about 300 and 70 to 75 basis points and um, my sense is that now you know having hit this run rate of growing our book by about 1700 to 2000 crores per quarter achieving a 25 percent type of growth rate for the organization we should be able to continue on at this rate uh, in a reasonably uh, robust and predictable manner. Uh, the company continues to uh, to be very well capitalized also to fund this. So our overall capital adequacy stands at over 18%. So we have a fair headroom to grow and and and, and grow at about 25%. Mm -hmm. Okay. While I got your spreads which you'll deliver this quarter, can you just take us through the NIMS or the margins that you'll reported in this quarter in particular and how exactly do you expect it to pan out on a parallel basis where exactly would, would the credit costs uh, stabilize at? Uh, so our, uh, our book is today uh, yielding about 13.5%. Six percent. Our uh, cost of funds are at about 10.1 percent. We enjoy a spread of about 350 basis points. If we look at the financial year, uh, the full 12 months of financial year, we've been able to maintain spreads at 350 basis points. NIM for an organization like ours is slightly less relevant because our mm -hmm. core tier one, which is equity, is very high at over 14 and a half percent, which is uh, a very unique mm -hmm. feature in the industry. Most other industry players operate at about 10 percent uh, uh, tier one. So NIM becomes a little less relevant. What is relevant is spread and return on asset. So spread for the year and the quarter was stable at 350 basis points and return on asset for the year it was stable at 380 basis points, which is actually 10, base, uh, 10 basis points higher than last year. Last year, return on asset was 370 basis points. Okay, okay. I just uh, for credit costs, sure. yeah, sorry. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, credit costs have been stable at about 30 basis points for uh, the year, and overall delinquencies have been restricted to 75 to 80 basis points. I had earlier uh, guided the market that our delinquencies will be in the range of 70 to 90 basis points mm -hmm. and we continue to be more on the lower side of that range than on the higher. Uh, similarly, we had guided at, at the market at the start of the last financial year that we'll grow by 20 to 25 percent. We've been able to exceed that number marginally and have grown by about almost 26 percent. Mm -hmm. So uh, my sense is that both on delinquencies, the range remains the same. So we should be in the range of 70 to 90 basis points in the near term. Okay. How have you managed to maintain your asset quality in terms of loan growth uh, and as a strategy that the company adopts, where exactly would you be the most cautious and where exactly would you be possibly uh, the most, uh, 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 you know, tread with trepidation in terms of worsening of asset quality or your book? See, our assets are largely uniform, so bulk of the assets that we finance are uh, uh, against the security of a house, which, you know, uh, is done at very, very mo moderate loan to value. So home loan that India Bulls gives out is given out, while the peak rate can be as high as 80 percent, the average for the book is only about 65 percent. It is a monthly amortizing loan, so the loan to value is actually coming down uh, every month. And, and, and there is a huge emphasis on 
cash flows which is done before the loan is actually given out so this is uh, you know not a loan where basis the collateral it is structured and given out since the payments have to come back from month 1 every okay. month which is both the interest and the principal so my sense is that on the retail side we continue to and uh, we, we continue to have fairly robust uh, asset quality yeah. i think that this is a phenomena which is not only true for indebuls but for the overall housing finance industry at large there are two trends which are you know very interesting one is that yeah. housing finance companies over a period of time have managed to increase their market share which is uh, essentially saying that home loan customers are still willing to look at paying a marginally higher interest rate for customer service and almost all housing finance companies have been able to maintain asset quality in broadly the range that we operate in okay and just before we let you go mr banga there is a lot of talk on uh, banking licenses licenses possibly coming through uh, would you all be as a group interested or india bulls housing finance uh, be interested in applying for one and uh, uh, whether or not you all have already yeah india bulls uh, uh, housing uh, you know uh, is completely ring fenced from whatever other businesses are there in in the india bulls group so to that extent we as uh, india bulls group have a very unique structure where there are you know five listed companies but each of those listed companies have you know not only at share holding level but also at operating balance sheet equity cross holding etc nothing to do with each other no cross balance sheet exposures whatsoever so to that extent we are very unique so we do not get affected by the cyclicality that maybe a real estate business or a power business may go through uh, having said that uh, you know we believe after plain reading of the guidelines that we are uh, eligible Uh, uh we believe that a bank is a very valuable franchise to acquire over a period of time so we will uh, surely participate but uh, as management our view also is that this is going to be a prolonged process uh, the central bank and the government would be very very careful in giving out these licenses so it's not going to happen in the very near future so what we are doing is that we are building the organization to grow at a rate of 25% for the next few years if a banking license is to happen we have ready the organization both from a structure as well as bandwidth perspective and uh, we will participate in that process uh, there is a deadline of the 1st of july which the reserve bank has uh, has specified so uh, after due approval of the board we should be applying All right Mr Banga we leave it at that thank you very much for joining in so that is India Bulls housing finance talking about the numbers where the asset quality has pretty much been maintained along with the spreads in the nibs this quarter and yes the India Bulls group would be interested in applying for a banking license if uh, and when the time comes and the structure of the businesses is pretty much adequate in order to accommodate that Nayanthara with that